So we had a viewer ask me a question and it was a very good question. And it was something I've been thinking about. It, I have this long list of projects to do and it was on the list already. Something that I've wanted for, for quite a while, um, probably for 10 years, I've been thinking about it off and on. Um, and it is one of these things. Now this is an HP 467A. A 467A is an amplifier. It's an audio amplifier. It's good to, it, this one will go up to one megahertz, which is quite, which is quite beefy. Um, it's not great at one megahertz, but certainly at uh, 10, 100 kilohertz, it's doing really, really well. Um, it it uh, will do uh, various voltage ranges. Um, now, the cool thing about this amplifier is it's not just an amplifier, it's also a power supply. You already need a power supply to be a, a buffer. So this is like an amplifier buffer, right? So think of it as a, as a, as a, uh, a mono uh, audio amplifier. You need a power supply in it and you need a pretty healthy power supply in it. So why not have that on your bench as well? So you can flip a switch and say, okay, I just want to do power supply. That's, that's over here. And then you want to do amplifier, you put it over here. So what you're basically just doing is you're breaking the sense line and allowing somebody to inject something on the sense line and push the power supply up and down. And so, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. Now, this is really only good for about 500 milliamps. Okay. Pretty good voltage ranges, plus or minus 20 volts. It's, but it's only, uh, it's only half an amp, uh, but quite fast. So yeah, it makes a very nice buffer and a, and a power supply. So I've never seen one of these, um, but I have seen the next one. Um, I'll put a, I'll put a picture of this one and a picture of the next one. Um, the next one here is an 80 HP 8627A. Now the HP 8627A, I used to have one on my bench at work. I was doing some research on motor control IC. So Hewlett Packard was doing motion control uh, stuff and they had a motor controller IC and um, I needed to be able to uh, drive a DC motor with a really health, healthy current and with a particular weird type of waveform. It was like pulse width modulated waveform and everything. And I needed a, I needed an amplifier to do this testing. And so I had one of these, an 8727A, and it was really, really nice. Now this is the unit I would love to have. I've looked around, they go for lots and lots of money even now used. And um, they will do plus or minus, let's see here, what's the DC ranges, plus or minus 12, uh, the, the 26A will do plus minus 60 volts, um, but this one, and then output current. I think this again, this one's a half an amp and the frequency range of this one is, hmm. What is the frequency range of this one? Power supply, drift, Isolation, uh, 15 kilohertz, 40 kilohertz. Yeah, 40 kilohertz. So this one will do 40 kilohertz. That's kind of the standard 40 kilohertz, I think. Um, so this is what I really, really wanted. And this is what I wanted to, to, to try to duplicate. So uh, my first thought was, well, it is a lot like a audio amplifier. And so I was thinking about using a chip like this, okay? Uh, TDA 2030A, there's a whole bunch of series of the TDAs and stuff. This one's a, a 18 watt hi-fi amplifier and 35 watt driver. Um, so this one will do plus or minus 16 volts and it'll, it'll uh, put current into four ohms. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty healthy. Um, so I thought, well, why not just make it into a lab bench type thing. It, 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 I think it has thermal protection in it, but I'm not quite, quite sure that I have blown these up before. So maybe they, maybe they don't, uh, class a B. So it probably gets warm anyway. Um, yeah. So I was thinking about using one of these. So I started to do some research and I ran across this paper, which is high power booster circuits to enhance your op amp circuit, op amp output. So perfect. Uh, that's what I want. I want a, I want a buffer. And uh, yeah, I guess who wrote this? Jim Williams. <laughs> of course, Jim Williams wrote it. He was at National Semi at the time. Um, let's see here. And uh, so he did the classic, you know, 
amplifier thing. This should look very, very familiar to you, right? So uh, some type of amplifier thing here. There's some type of current control in the drive section and stuff. So it has short circuit protection. That's what I wanted. I wanted something that I could crowbar and it wouldn't blow up. So that was my main goal is to make it short circuit protected. So this one has that built that built in. So this is this is great. Now you see this one also had to worry about some transient stuff. It says you need to use a solid tantalum for the bypassing. So uh, those have really, really low ESR. So yeah, so solid tantalum. So maybe that's my trick. I'll need to maybe I should put some tantalums on my other circuit. Um, uh, which I'll show you in a, in, in a moment. I'll show you that one. I've been having a little bit of trouble with it, but uh, uh, yeah, let me, let me uh, hold off on that. Anyway, so something like this. Uh, the next idea he had was, uh, uh, there's, there's also ways to do the current protection by monitoring the input power to the op amps, to, anyway, a bunch of tricks there. So that was kind of over my head. I, I didn't want to do that one. Uh, here's one that looks very similar to some HP um, function generators that I've seen. They kind of have an out output stage that looks that looks very similar to this. Uh, so that one that one looked interesting. Uh, here's one that does voltage gain. So. Uh, plus or minus 15 volts here, but plus or minus 120 volts out here. So uh, this is kind of an unusual circuit to have voltage gain in the output section. But uh, I looked at these circuits when I was doing my uh, transistor curve tracer. Um, so yeah, they're, they're very, very interesting. Uh, he said, uh, well, uh, why not use tubes? Tubes can output a lot of power. And so he's got 400 volts here and these big, big output tubes. So it's, yeah, it's starting to look like a ham radio now, right? So, or, or a Macintosh uh, amplifiers, a big beefy uh, 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 tubes. What tubes did he use? The, uh, what tubes? Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, some kind of vacuum tube thing. So that's cool. And then, uh, wow, so he had the same idea I did was, hey, audio amplifiers kind of do this already. And so he says, well, hey, let's just get a Macintosh uh, audio amplifier. And so he's got, a, he's got this audio amplifier in here in the, in the schematic. <laughs> that, that's Jim Williams. That is Jim Williams. He says, okay, great. We'll drive our op amp to that. We'll take the feedback and bring it all the way around to the input section. You've seen me do that before to correct any nonlinearities and stuff. Bring that feedback all the way back down to the beginning and it'll correct everything in the middle. So yeah, use this big audio amplifier here, four ohms, eight ohms. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a grunt. Uh, this works. This works really, really well, right? Okay, so what did I end up doing? I ended up asking. So remember, never be afraid to ask. So I asked my friend, I said, you know, I really like those old HP um, amplifiers, those power supply amplifiers. Is there a modern equivalent? I know Keysight doesn't build one anymore. So is there a modern equivalent of that? And he goes, yes. And he pointed me to this company that builds them and they're really super duper and they're $700. <laughs> All right, okay, never mind. He says, or he says, you might look at an OPA 59, uh, 549. Um, and I said, okay, great. Now, after he had told me about this part, um, the, uh, the person who left the comment also mentioned this part. Uh, and so at least two people had, had considered this part as, as a good, uh, as a good buffer. And I took a look at the, at the data sheet and this is the perfect part. Um, high voltage, high current operational amplifier. Now check this out. Eight amps continuous, eight amps. So, wow, it's a grunt, uh, single supply plus 60 dual supply plus or minus 30 volts. So plus or minus 30 volts. That's a great. Uh, it's got automatic thermal shutdown and automatic current shutdown, both. So this thing is indestructible. It's like you, you can't damage this part, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe you can, but this thing just seems like it's completely indestructible. Um, it actually has a pin coming out, tells you when it goes into thermal shutdown, you can light up an LED. Uh, you can actually control the, uh, uh, where it crowbars for current uh, current supply. You can program it with resistor. You can program it with a DAC. Uh, it, 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 anyway, applications, you know, all kinds of transducer type stuff, audio, even audio power amplifiers, okay? And then test equipment. So yay, test equipment. Okay, I'm sold. <laughs> I want one of these things. So uh, I went uh, and looked at these and they're about a $25 part. 
So, you know, not too bad, but geez, $25 for an op amp? Ah! Went on to eBay, of course, and a guy had them for $8. Uh, new. So, so this is what they look like. Um, I zoomed in all the yeah. um, They're kind of a funny little package. They're kind of like an audio amplifier, uh, but a really heavy, uh, heavy, thick uh, heat sink in it. Nice big tab. And uh, yeah, a little bit strange spacing. I think it's probably uh, uh, metric spacing, so it's maybe a little bit harder to use. But uh, yeah, there it is. So really excited. Uh, so I built one. And let's go and look at it. All right, so here's how I've wired up the uh, the other one. Um, uh, I did buy I did buy two of them. Uh, it's on a heatsink, of course, and I have a resistor to program the current limit. I'm using a 17 17 uh, k resistor. Should limit to it to about two and a half amps, something like that. And uh, I have an input here for a signal generator, and then the outputs on this uh, on a, this wire right here. So uh, the rest of what you need is you need a, get power somehow into it. Now the first time I connected this thing, uh, I connected it directly to the power supply, and I was getting ringing, and that's because I had long inductances between the power supply and uh, this this uh, op amp because it's going to be really humping current, and it needs to have a local source for that. So I put in uh, a couple. Uh, capacitors uh, lo locally here to uh, to help with that. So these are 2200 microfarads uh, and I have uh, plus and minus 15 volts going in and I have a load resistor here. Uh, I have it on this little piece of uh, <laughs> aluminum so it doesn't burn my de my uh, my bench here because uh, it can get really really hot. So it's just, it, it, most of it's up in the air, so most of it's convectively cooled, but there's one little corner there. I didn't want to burn the, burn the wood. All right. So like I said, let's, uh, let's hook this thing up and uh, see what we can do here. Uh, I am going to be using the uh, uh, HP 33120A um, generator. Uh, that's kind of the one that started this whole thing. Uh, it has a really nice drive output capability uh, into 50 ohms. It'll do 10 volts into 50 ohms, so it's it's quite good. But we're not going to use it that way. We're going to use it as an input to this uh, to this op amp, and the op amp will be doing all the work. All right, and we'll be uh, running into 20 ohms. All right, so our load is 20 ohms. And uh, yeah, let me rearrange the camera so it's uh, looking good on the oscilloscope, and we'll take a look. All right, let's see. Let's turn on the power supply, and uh, there we go. We're getting a signal. All right, so what do we have? Uh, we are at uh, 5 volts per division, so it's going about uh, plus or minus 8 volts, something like that. Uh, very nice, and we're running at 10 kilohertz, so it's pretty good. Uh, we can go down. That's 1 kilohertz. We can go up, and... Uh, I am. I think I am maxed out on the amount of amplitude for the function generator. Yeah, I can't output any more on the function generator generator right now. But it is. Uh, it is doing quite a quite a quite a bit of work. Um, we can calculate it. At eight uh, plus and minus eight volts into twenty ohms is pretty healthy. Um, all right. So the only thing that I've noticed. Well, first of all, let's uh, let's do square waves. They look. They look very good. A little bit of undershoot there, but uh, they look very good. Uh, triangle wave. Yeah, get that little shoot there. Now I think this is something that I can fix, but I'm not sure yet. So if I go to square wave, um, yeah, I think I think there's just something at the bottom end of this thing, uh, and I it might be some more bypassing to make it stable, uh, but I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and increase the uh, oops. Let's increase the frequency here and see how it does. It's holding up pretty well. Now at higher stuff, it's starting to get a little glitch here. So right about oops, kind of, kind of hard to see here. Well, I still I still see a little glitch there. Well, maybe not now. Right about 
It's on the downward stroke. Right about there, we're starting to generate a little glitch at about 13 kilohertz. And if we ramp it up farther, that's, uh, that's 40 kilohertz. That was kind of my design spec. I wanted it to be able to run at least that fast. And we are getting this little junky thing down here. Uh, square wave. Oh, square wave looks all right. That little ring at the bottom. Yeah, there's just something funny going on there. I'm going to have to investigate why that's, why that's there. Maybe somebody knows. But uh, I am very, very pleased with it. Um, I think what needs to happen is I need to find a good box for it and its own dedicated power supply. So I kind of want to be able to at least do plus or minus four amps. Um, so, and it add about 24 volts. So I need to power supply about t plus or minus 24 volts at four amps and put it in a box and, and make it a nice little product. Um, is this thing getting warm? Let me, uh, let me get up my, uh, I've got a, uh, a thermometer thing here that throws out a little, uh, laser thing. So the, the heat sink right now is at 52 degrees C. 52, the parts at about 52, so it's good good contact there. And our uh, our resistor is at a hundred oh, resistors at 110 110 C. So yeah, let me turn it off. <laughs> so re yeah, the resistor's getting super, super hot. 110 C. Uh now it's cooling down good. 95 C. Uh, so there you go. It is a very, very nice way to uh add a buffer to your uh, fu function generator. All right, so that's the end of this video. Um, eventually I'll get it inside a box. I'm look still looking for the power supply to go with it and stuff. I have some ideas, but I'm still looking for a, for a good power supply. Um, but yeah, I think this part is, uh, is gonna be great. I need to learn how to drive it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I think this is gonna be the, uh, the perfect device.